93% of 8 to 12 year olds in Ireland have a smart device of their own. With technology comes concerns about online activity and indeed cyber bullying and News Talk's technology correspondent Jess Kelly joins me now on the line. Jess, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Now, before we talk about bullying, let's talk about access to social media. Are there rules as to what age you have to be before you can actually be on Facebook or Instagram or any of those? There are rules in place, Pat, but it's very much um, in the small print of the terms and conditions. When you go to download a social media app, whether that is Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever it is, all you need to do is go into your app store and download it. When you go to set up an account, it will then ask you certain platforms um, have an age limit of 13. It will ask you if you're over 13 years of age, if you know how to do pretty easy maths, uh, you'll be able to get past that. But in terms of um, the rules, the age of digital consent in Ireland is 16. And what that means is if your child is under the age of 16 and they're using any of these apps that collect and analyze data and so on, you, the parent, must give consent on behalf of your child. Um, it, apps like Instagram and TikTok and so on have a minimum age of 13. So uh, kids under the age of 13 should not be on the, on, on those platforms. Um, but parental consent and parental understanding is really important when it comes to giving your child access to social media. Quite clearly, though, kids get around all this. There's no question about it because you've got very young children who are on these apps. Yeah, and, you know, we see a lot of younger people. I know myself um, that friends of mine have family members who are 8, 9, 10, and they share around TikTok videos of them dancing along. And it seems pretty harmless. But the, the there are a few different issues. Firstly, what your child creates on an app is one thing, but it's what they see and what they consume and who engages with them that is the big concern. There's also the concern as well, and it's a bit more sort of high thinking in relation to the data that's being collected about your child. And if you, the parent, don't understand and don't appreciate that, then that is an issue. There's been a lot of talk about should we bring in, you know, age verification tools for social media. I don't know how many parents would be comfortable, for example, scanning their child's passport to give them access to social media or tying their social media accounts to their PPS number. But that is something that may have to be looked at in the future. Now, we want to talk about cyber bullying. And if you've got uh, a a smartphone and you're on any of these uh, apps, you are potentially prone to uh, this happening to you. Uh, How can you tell if you're a parent? How can you tell that your kid might be bullying because being bullied because you don't have access to their phone? Yeah, this is a huge issue, but having worked quite a lot with the ISPCC, with Webwise and with other organisations, what that they all say is that it's very similar to normal bullying, if we call it that, in that you will notice changes in behaviour. You may notice that the child is concealing the phone a bit more. They may be spending more time on their own. They may come home upset and there may be no um, you know, reports home from school, for example, that anything may have happened throughout the day. So it is that classic thing of changes in behaviour. But before you get to the point of cyberbullying, and I think, you know, on Tuesdays, Pat, you and I often talk about the best phones and all the rest. And when people ask about the best phone for a child, I always say set up the phone uh, with Google Family Link. That means that you have eyes on the apps that they're using. You won't be able to see the content, but you will be able to see what they're interacting with. The other point that I always make is that before you give a device to a child or before you allow them onto social media, ensure you open up the conversation with them to find out why they want the technology, what they're going to do. And try and have it so that there's a natural dialogue so that if something does go awry, the child feels comfortable and confident in coming to you to tell you that there has been a problem and then you can take the next steps. If a child comes to you with a problem saying they've been bullied and maybe shows you some of the content, uh, one of the pieces of advice is don't lose the head. Don't say, I'm going down to that school. I'm going to find that person. I'm going to find their parents. I'm going to don't do that because that is the last thing the kid might want to do to escalate the whole thing. Yeah, and so that is absolutely imperative. And the other thing is, don't just say, okay, I'm taking the phone away because the child has come to you looking for help. And I think if you confiscate the technology, it will then put them off coming to you again. So I think the keep calm and carry on. If it is online, the best sort of approach is to screenshot 
any evidence, any of those messages, um, regardless of whether they're coming from a, a person that the child knows or somebody that they don't know. If it's somebody from within the class, for example, you can go to the school. Every school has an anti-bullying policy in place. So you can go to the teacher, you can tell them about it and try and address it in that way. If it's a stranger, um, again, if it's nasty comments, if it's hurtful comments, you can screenshot. I always recommend you screenshot just because it's always good to have a trace of these things. But then you can block and report the content. All of the social media platforms have report protocols. If you know your child is using particular apps, so whether that is TikTok, Instagram, whatever it may be, I always think you should download the app onto your phone yourself and get familiar with the infrastructure. Find out where the report button is. Find out what the report policy is because not every social media platform deals with complaints in the same way. So it's really important that you educate yourself as much as possible before an issue arises because we know when something does crop up that, you know, brings panic, it brings fear, it brings a lot of different emotions. So the more information you have before the fact, the better. All right. So uh, the advice to the child, first of all, don't reply to any of these nasty things. Yes, Keep the messages uh, and screenshot them just in case they miraculously vanish off your phone. Block the sender because you mm-hmm. don't need to keep the lines open to those people and then report the problems. It could be to the school, but it could even be more serious than that. It could be to the Gardaí. Yes, exactly it. There are plenty of resources out there. I know parents sometimes feel helpless when uh, something happens to their child, particularly when it comes to cyberbullying. But the thing to remember is it's still bullying. It's just happening in a different form. There are supports out there, be that from the school, from the Gardaí, And there are brilliant organisations. The ISPCC.ie website is a brilliant resource for parents looking for advice. There's also Cyber Safe Kids Ireland, which runs online talks for parents. So if your child is perhaps contemplating asking Santa for a smartphone for Christmas and you're worried what that might bring, again, it's good to be proactive and get ahead of it and engage with these organisations to get the information before something crops up. Jess Kelly, our technology correspondent, thank you very much for uh, joining us.